Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today is a uh, workshop uh, man cave. I've never really liked the word man cave, but it exactly can be more or less any hobby. Uh, personally, I call this a studio. Yes, I know, it, you know, studio. Yes, it's a, an, an ex bedroom, <laughs> but it's a studio to me. It makes me feel better. Uh, I was nominated uh, to do this, uh, and there was no pressure put on me. Uh, but I was nominated to do this by Michael, uh, Mr. Hamilcar Barkis. Uh, there aren't many people that don't know Michael. He's hugely supportive of the uh, model making and uh, uh, display figure uh, community. Uh, you know, he he's one of these large channels that I wouldn't say hasn't forgotten where he's come from, but he, he gives a lot of time to other channels. Uh, you do find sometimes when people start moving up the pecking order, you know, the ranking system, I suppose, if you want to call it that way, uh, often people um, don't get involved uh, as much as they used to. Uh, but Michael's never been like that. He's, he's always been hugely supportive of my channel. And Michael, I thank you for putting me forward uh, for this uh, tour, I think. <laughs> so, I'll tell you what, guys, if you do get nominated for this, your your studios, your workshops, your man caves, whatever you want to call them, your tea tray on your lap, whatever it is, will never be so clean. I have spent a morning going around trying to clean my workbench off and all the bits and pieces. <laughs> so thank you very much, Michael. You've pushed me to do something I needed to do for a few months. Uh, when Michael did his video, he uh, was saying um, he feels very lucky because he's got his... Uh, dedicated workspace and uh, a lot of people don't a lot of people might be having to work from their kitchen tables have to pack everything away every night uh, have storage problems uh, some people just literally whether you're making a, a model or painting a display figure or whatever you're doing it on a literally on a tea tray on your lap uh, we really have to make do and mend really and, and whatever we've got we all dream of better things I'm quite sure these guys that have giant dedicated rooms, you know, extensions or whatever, I'm quite sure they want a bigger, bigger, you know, modelling rooms. Uh, but, you know, the model making hobby particularly, and, you know, the, the, the figure painting, uh, it's, it's always been a huge part of my life. The figure painting, I've made models as kids, I'm a returning modeller, I've only been making models again for what, you'd have to check my videos out, but about 18 months, most of them badly. Uh, as we see by some of the, the videos, I've got uh, like severe mental health problems and you'll hear lots of guys have the same things and it, it really helps us get through the day, the night, whatever, you know, we, we focus on our, our kits or, or figures, or whatever, whatever you, you know, your thing is. Uh, and to have a dedica dedicated space um, is, is essential. My room is... As some of you probably know, I paint historical war games figures for, oh, it really isn't a living. Um, I just contribute to our household income. It's, uh, it's the only way I can. I can't work, head shattered, so uh, I do this. Um, so originally it was dedicated to, to that uh, and obviously doing some of my own figure painting as well for my own um, display cabinet, which has got less and less because I've obviously started scale modelling as well when you can't do everything. Uh, so this, when I show you this tour, it is going to be, um, you'll have to just take it as it does everything, this, this room. Uh, it's all related, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to, I, I'm extremely stuck for, say, display space. Um, I share this room, uh, when I say share this room with my wife, she doesn't craft in here or do anything like that. But it's literally a, a dressing room, one of the cupboards has got her clothes in, one of the others has got my clothes plus. <laughs> Plus uh, a chest of drawers in there full of uh, modelling figure related stuff, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, so, so, you know, and she's immensely house proud. <laughs> I'm not. So I can't have, I see these guys with rows and rows of paints on the wall and, and display figures and aircraft models hanging off the wall, whatever it is. I can't have that. Uh, so I've got to make do with what I've got. Um, so bear that in mind when we go around because. Uh, you know, as usual in my, my videos, there's more waffle and ramble 
than substance. But uh, you know, I've been put forward for this, so uh, I thought I'd give you a tour of uh, um, of where I actually work, and I literally do spend. Uh, if I'm not taking my pop out, uh, my my surviving pop out uh, for his walk, pop meaning dog. I've just think that's impersonal. Uh, but my my pop. I take him out for a walk. I'm literally then at my desk, apart from meal times, the wife's downstairs watching TV at night. I'm up here painting or model making, um, and it's my little haven. It's uh, it's my safe space, if if that makes sense for any of those guys out there that do have their problems. You'll probably understand what I mean. So guys, cut the waffle, Gav. We just want to see what in your drawers. <laughs> there's, a, there's a joke in there somewhere, but uh, yeah. So I'll cut this off. We'll, uh, I'm hoping the light's good enough. I do have a couple of lights that I normally do with videos, but it means wires and I'm bound to trip over them and send, send lights flying over figures and stuff, and that wouldn't be good. So next time you see us, we'll have a, a look at the uh, room in general, and then we'll get down to the nitty gritty of the, the bits I've got and the bits I'd like. See you in a minute, guys. Right, guys, uh, we're now on drone view. So it's a standard semi-detached house in the UK, which means it's small. Um, there's my workbench, uh, laptop, which has continuously got YouTube. I don't watch anything else apart from putting YouTubes on. Occasionally I might um, uh, put something else on, but it, it's 90% it's uh, YouTube vids of one description or another. Very rarely these days. I do put a bit of music on, but it's, it's rare these days. It, it tends to be, uh, you know, what's actually... Um, uh, I'm interested in at the time so that's my uh, desk but we're going to have a look at that in a, in a bit my spray booth there's another desk at the side there two chairs the usual storage cupboard and we'll see all this in a minute when we get a bit closer We've got my my uh, printer, the City of Coventry, and another one uh, with a Kestrel. Uh, I've got two steam trains on my wall, steam locomotives, rather than um, military stuff. I'm a huge military uh, person. Uh, I've I've got, I've, but I've also into British steam locomotives from the 20s to the 1969 when they finished on our railways. Um, I'm not a I'm not a, a buff, I can tell you a few engines and things like that, I just happen to like them and I was constantly going over in my head what I, uh, what I'd, my wife said, why don't you have a couple of pictures for your room for your 50th birthday, uh, that's my favourite, City of Coventry uh, and in the end I went for steam locomotives because I just couldn't make my mind up, sea, air and land, so I went for steam locomotives instead. Right, we'll go down to the bench. Right guys, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> uh, as you can see, my cutting mat has seen way better days. It's covered in super glue. I do suppose I'll have to replace it, but I'm on limited income funds, whatever. And uh, you make do and mend, don't you? And Rick, to be honest with you, it's, it, it's still cut, you can cut on it fine. Um, model on it fine so I don't really see the sense in apart from it looks untidy if I'm shooting a video I usually cover it with a bit of cardboard so these are some figures that I'm in the middle of working on at the moment some French Old Guard for a client um, I'm still putting the non-metallic metal he wanted non-metallic metal on these so hence this office is still and it's not going to concentrate on it, is it? Because it's uh, trying to find other things. But yeah, that's what I do for a living anyway. That's 28 mil. I do a lot of 18 millimeters for a client. Uh, brushes. Uh, I actually use Army Painter. Um, you know, a lot of people think you use specialist brushes. Uh, I've got a bit of a gammy hand as well. Um, I spent 23, 24 years as a tree surgeon climbing trees and whatever. And um, my body's also a bit beat up. And one of my hands is a bit gammy, so uh, I find the triangular brushes fit in my hands better. 
Um, I, I swear by these. I get the odd bad one. It's not very often. Obviously, people are picking them at the warehouse for you. You don't get to see them, so if they pick me a wrong one, um, it's a bit of a pain in the bum, but there you go. It's not very often it happens. Steel rule. And this is, again, <laughs> this all looks very staged, doesn't it? As if Gav's come around here and tidied everything up. Uh, scissors I use for cutting bits of plastic card and paper and stuff. Pin vice, I need to get a couple actually, really. Syringe I use for pulling out water and, and damping down areas or, or putting on stuff. Uh, my trusty Morton, Swan Morton scalpel. Uh, the tweezers I use for more or less everything. I've only got the one set of decent tweezers at the moment and I need to get some more. On my bench, loads of whitish off-white paint. That's because uh, I do a lot of Napoleonics and it's better to keep it there and it's there all the time along with black because it gets used all the time. Uh, bottle of brush cleaner. Um, I've also got brush soap but obviously these are synthetic brushes and I find that the, the brush cleaner works better. Uh, I use I put up my pigments and, and, and enamels in these as well as uh, uh, putting super glue and things like that on. A uh, little uh, top there full of offcuts of different paper clips and that I use for pinning stuff. Uh, these have appeared since I'm now a proud modeler. These have appeared recently on my desk full time. My extra thin, my sprue glue, which I use, I'm using on the Osario at the moment. First time I've used that. That's great. I find that the Tamiya normal stuff is brilliant for um, for uh, sticking the larger areas. I find the other stuff evaporates quite quick. Uh, we've got different uh, varnishes here I use on the figures, but also on the the vehicles sometimes. Uh, these are sometimes scrap brushes, you know, they get, they're worn out and they literally get used to there's nothing left. So once a brush has lost its tip, it then gets used to paint bases on figures and stuff. And when it's done that, it gets used to paint the Tamiya plastic putty if I want to put it around, you know, thinner areas. There's also flat brushes, you know, all the different stuff you use for dioramas and stuff. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of paints, as you'll see in a minute. These are all Vallejos, no particular order apart from roughly in the rough colours that I want. Uh, some ready use uh, clamps. Um, I've got loads of those actually in the box and whatever, but they're just what I call ready use ones. A uh, bit of a colour wheel. Uh, I'd recommend that company, a bit of free advertising for them. Green Stuff World, any type of green stuff, um, sculpting tools, you know, things like that. Bits of chain and that. Uh, that's just, I mean, as a figure painter, you more or less know the colour wheel, but uh, it's there just to that. This is uh, one of my favourite. I'm into Japanese Yukio uh, woodcuts, uh, prints. Obviously, I don't own any. Just uh, I've got a couple of books and things like that. But um, those of us like with PTSD and different mental health problems, uh, there's like safe places they have, they tell you to go to. So it can be walking <laughs> walking on wet grass or on a sandy beach. You know all that type of stuff. Uh, for me, it's actually this picture it kept popping in my head. So a psychologist said, why don't we use that one? We'll go with that. So um, I literally carry a mini one <laughs> version around in my wallet and uh, and this. And when my head starts going, I look at this and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it helps bring me back. Sorry about that, guys. I know you don't want to hear all that, that stuff, but, um, you know, it's all part of who I am and, and, and how I work. Uh, can't praise these paints enough uh, Andrea I use them on my large figures and I use them uh, on my war games figures that I paint for people as well I've got the blue and the red at the moment and looking for for probably getting the yellow set as well uh, oh a wet palette um, as you can see it's a small one I don't need anything bigger than that uh, large piece of packing sponge there somebody sent me some figures in it's ideal for the rest of my hands on when I'm painting uh, oh you can't be British and not drink a brew and be a fan of Asterix uh, reading glasses <laughs> I've got no choice uh, I'm 50 odd uh, I don't want to put the probably won't show the lights but that's the old overhead light can't remember its name it's got three tubes but they now do them in those uh, you know the new type lighting and I need to get one of those that's my very old one I don't use a magnifier in it um, it's just there to help with the videos throw on extra light uh, here we have um, my spray booth I tend to keep it tidy don't I often pull these off by mistake so you see some figures in there uh, we will we'll be having a reveal on the oh here we have more or less have a reveal on the lav 
Um, the only problem is I'm still waiting to get some guitar string for the antennas because I've put wire on it just sort of snapped off with the super glue. So lesson learnt on that one. And let's just pull this out for now. There's our Rosario. There'll be a video coming up on her uh, in the next few days. Let's pop that there for now. Uh, under there, Sea Fury. <laughs> no, I'm not getting it out yet. I'll see you in that one. Not for a while anyway. Uh, paints I still use. Um, I tend to fish them out at the beginning of the day uh, if I need them. I'd actually prefer to store them like that because these are just the dust magnets when it's like that. Uh, makeup brush. Uh, no, uh, Greg Riley sent me this. He uses it all the time when he goes down the town. No, I joke, Greg. No, but it's good for, for getting um, de-dusting de stuff and figures and getting your dust off your, your models and stuff as you're sanding them. Uh, some large-scale sanding sticks. Metal files I'm using all the time, obviously, because I'm doing the figures, but I also use them on the kits if something needs to go out. Standard stuff. Um, uh, wire snips. Ancient wire snips are getting a bit old, so I've got those new ones. I don't actually use that Citadel scraper. I bought it and... Now this is my biggest sea change that's helped me in my modelling so far, apart from the advice of you guys, and that's um, uh, sprue cutters, a pair of cheap ones there, they literally just crush things. So on my desk always, I have my Tamiya ones, and they have been absolute godsend. Some more, I've got loads of thinning, I prefer the thin sticks, those ones are flowery ones. Uh, Swan Morton uh, blades for the, for the scalpel, toothbrush I use for cleaning off, either metal figures or um, um, or plastic bits after they've had a bit of too much of a of a uh, you know the bits and pieces when you sanded them uh, underneath box uh, that holds green stuff uh, it, it's more of a dumping ground to be honest with you there's no point getting it out but that holds uh, dumping uh, <laughs> yeah dumping ground for other bits and pieces but green stuff sculpting tools things like that uh, obviously we've all got a kitchen Rolls, uh, huge amount of bottle tops. I stick the 18 mils on. I do a lot of, if you watch my work, I do a lot of commission work uh, for a fella that lo loves 18 millimeter figures, and uh, that's what I actually uh, uh, stick them on. So, right, we'll go crossover. Oh, second chair, just to show what an eclectic mix a modeler or a figure painter or a bit of everything has. We've got the Challenger 2, I'm actually using that on the Osario just to look. It's got some really great close-up photographs. I am using walk-round ones on the on the computer for the, for the of the actual Osario, but these have got some cracking uh, cracking close-up photographs. And just to show the different uh, you know metal effects and things like that, uh, got a notebook. I've been writing a recipe. I often write paint recipes down for the figures I'm painting because I forget. Uh, We've got uh, Rousselot's, I probably haven't pronounced it right, Napoleon Army, just to get my old guard that I'm painting at the moment, make sure I'm doing that in more or less the correct order. Another Osprey underneath the old guard. Uh, we have boxes of, um, uh, to keep some of them on my 10 mils. I don't war game myself, but for some strange reason, I keep painting 10 mil war games figures. I might not paint any for a few months and then have a splurge for a month and do two or three regiments. But as if there's some American Civil War in there and some buildings, uh, I'll probably, whether I'll ever game them. Um, uh, wife's hair tongs, so I say, it's a shared room. Uh, piece of wood there that I use for cutting a uh, um, plinths off because I can't afford the real things very often. Sorry about this, guys, we're all over the shop. But uh, the plain cardboard box has got my lighting rigging that I'd normally shoot videos with. We've got the Zvezda Grad. Now I can't wait to do that, but I just want to, I've got another one to do before I do that. Uh, I've got the Zvezda uh, Mi8 there, the Ninja I showed recently. I'm putting that off for just a short while because as you know my confidence took a hell of a belting with that FT-17 and I just don't think I'm going to get that together with a seam line that's um, that you can't see, not at the moment. The Osario, the FT-17, just like the T-55 it will be built or well, hopefully <laughs> uh, the Osario loving that thanks a lot Greg Riley for sending me that because that's really helped pull me together uh, I know what you're thinking guys why is a a bold bloke with a, a potato head got himself hair dryer well obviously it speeds up my uh, figure painting 
uh, just give it a few blasts with that. Also, uh, when I'm painting on the models, uh, the top uh, carton there that's got different types of wiring, florist wire, and things that I use for um, scratch building. It's great for putting. I'm learning, teaching myself how to do the little handles on on tanks and stuff. The Sea Fury, all that really contains is the sprues and stuff. Uh, I won't throw a box out until the kit's done. <laughs> so I'm going to have a lot of boxes. Uh, there's the T55. Uh, the lav's on top. That's more or less done. Um, once the guitar strings, I get the guitar strings for the antenna. Uh, I'll dispose of the box and clip off any spares that I can find in there. Uh, the, there's the cardboard box and the orange box. Is There's so much in these T55 complete builds that uh, you need two boxes. The wicker thing underneath, that's all war game related stuff again uh, over the years uh, but I've, sometimes I've got some great war battleships in there uh, that I, I, I painted a few a few months back and put on the channel just for something different but yeah I, there's no point showing in that because it's all war game related stuff and as I say although I don't game I uh, I still do bits and pieces I'm sorry for all this seasickness but I don't know what else to do for you let's have a look all right we go Top shelf, we've got, um, I'm, yeah, an old bloke, but I'm mad on the Harry Potter books and stuff. Uh, and then night models, Harry Potter figures I paint for myself. And, and sometimes uh, my friend in Norway has them for his daughter. And I also send her some as gifts. Uh, magic Sculpt, uh, I'm using that more and more. Or the Vaseline to use on the, on the Magic Sculpt, on the, on the sculpting tools. Uh, lots of... The envelopes there contain lots of colours, meaning flags for you guys that aren't British Army related. Uh, they're for the soldiers I paint. Uh, we've got pre-cut off baking sheet for putting on the wet palette. Uh, last reserves of paint brushes I need to restock. Um, we've got sticky glue for foliage. Uh, these ice lollies I forced myself to eat. Yeah, I know. I'm a hero. Uh, because the round sticks come in handy. I couldn't have just gone and bought some. Uh, reference material for Napoleonic painting. Uh, this stuff from Vallejo is great, I think. Um, you can't put it on super thick, uh, but uh, it's brilliant um, for for dioramas. Uh, wet snow effect, and that's like a, a... give you like an icy type of look. Uh, bulldoggy type clips I bought because uh, from a cheap shop because I thought they'd be good for holding for painting. Uh, some 10 mil soldiers. I actually was tidying up in here before I did this video. Uh, uh, pins I use for, for for pinning stuff, but also for cutting up and using for other things. Uh, we've got snow uh, from wooden scenics and stuff like that. Obviously for dioramas and for the soldiers. The snow for dioramas. I'd only I'd use that to give you the texture. But I definitely would uh, put an airbrush over it because it goes yellow otherwise. Uh, the cork bongs I use for mounting figures. Uh, jars for replacing those water jars. I use three jars for painting figures. One for metallic paint. I never put a, I never put a brush that's painted metallic into your normal cleaning water um, because there's always a chance you're going to get metal flakes and then put them back into your paintwork. So always wash your brush out in. A separate container so I often collect these and then they become dumping grounds as always uh, lots of the boxes at the back contain just scratch building stuff we've got sand when you, you need reading glasses and you do as much painting and modeling as I do you need a load of glass cleaner uh, that's the brand of camera that this is it's only a cheap one it's not one of these next generation ones uh, we go down we've got some again these 10 mils that I I paint occasionally and spend years doing. <laughs> Don't know why. Uh, I just still do it. That's my Starfighter. I've prompt that stops in there now until I become proficient model enough that I can get another Starfighter and see if I've come. It probably be a couple of years, and then I'm going to get the same model and see if I can build it again. Uh, this is my flop box. I make my own tufts for the soldiers for people. Uh, but I also find it's handy for dioramas now as well. Uh, with odds and sods in there, some old wargaming buildings from years and years ago I'll have to dispose of at some stage. Uh, I use 
a lot of the lolly sticks for hedges for wargaming stuff again i don't game but I, I, it's stuff i've still got and i still use occasionally just to help um with doing bits and pieces uh, that's uh, a box full of soldier uh, different figures that are mainly fantasy figures i had to go out and never could sell woe is me uh, we've got uh, soldier related again uh, milk bottle tops we've got a uh, one of the masks that i use for just for resin uh, when i'm doing a resin figure uh, the that's got full of um, bases again you don't really again i oh, so i apologize guys this is a modeling related thing and i'm hoping to show you a lot of stuff that isn't really modeling related but um it's just because i have such a mix of stuff i have to do uh in there cork, cork four tiles are brilliant for different types of dioramas uh the i've got some sanding sheets uh some plastic card sheets so that's in there uh, obviously i do enjoy my curries and uh, no, we don't have the smallest delivery service in the world. That is just for the dips, if anybody doesn't know. But they're great for mixing up stuff and disposing type of thing. We've got my 1 in 35 sale spares. As you can see, it's in such a small box because I don't have a lot. Underneath there, we've got the um, different... I don't use the Yoohoo glue for stringy glue for model making. That was back in the 1980s. But I do use it for sticking on hedgerows and stuff because it's, it's handy for that. Uh, Right, here we've got bits of Asario that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, sanding sticks again. I've got my small uh, small photo etch bender. At the moment that's all I need. It was about 15 quid I think. And uh, again it was a China buy. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's served me well so far. Uh, I've got, uh, was it a Vernier? One of those big metal ones. Uh, I only got these yesterday, came through the post, thought so I was buying them from a UK supplier and they've come from Hong Kong. Uh, so they took a bit longer, but yeah, those, you know, clips for airbrushing, see how they work out. Now this is my Pride and Joy box. I've got my uh, Iwata Studio Series compressor in there. I've got a Neo, which I don't really use now. It's got, the seals are fairly knackered and it's got a 0 0.5 needle. And it just puts clouds out. I've got one of those Bart Sharp uh, cheap airbrushes. They get them, I suppose, done in China, about 27 quid, but it comes with a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5 needle, and all the, the you know the, the accoutrements for it. And I use that all the time at the moment. How long it'll last, I don't know, but it's doing good service. Uh, Phil Flory on one of his. I'm not a member of his if his if his uh, chat thing he does, but. He puts them on on YouTube and he'd been singing the praises of the Procon, Colorboy Procon, whatever. And I bought one of those from Japan. And yeah, I did get clobbered in customs. <laughs> uh, and that, um, that is, uh, I, I've, I've never used it yet. It's got a big cup on the front and I prefer the smaller cups because you can see over the top. But I will get there to using it. But at the moment the Bart Sharp's just proving fine. I haven't got a braided hose yet. I've only got the plastic one that came with the with the compressor and whatever. So I do would like to get a braided hose. I've got more thinners known to man in there as well. I've got uh, the little color cups, um, uh, the color cups, um, or shot glasses, I should say, for mixing up and you know anything that you can think of that that needs airbrushing wise is is in that box. Uh, it keeps the dust off everything uh, and that that works well for for me right i'll cut out for a second and we'll i'll join you again in a minute right guys we're at the top of the uh, cupboard now um let's see if we can that's uh, the next eight weights and when these other eight on the bench are done they will go for uh, a varnish with these guys uh, that box in the back uh sorry at the back room that stores i've got my boss there of uh my native still being done I've got a couple of 35s in there they're going off to my mate Greg Riley um, he's been very supportive for me uh, and we've got different Harry Potter figures in that they've all got to be cleaned up uh, this a uh, bit of a sad subject for me uh, I lost my older pop he was 10 and uh, this is him this is Barclay and 
he was my constant companion for when I was working on the trees and working in here. Uh, my wife gets me fresh flowers, uh, well for herself as well, as in because she loves him as much as I do, but we just never had the heart, I couldn't just throw his, his ashes anywhere. So this was the room he spent all his time with with me and uh, he still stays with me, so um, he gets flowers every week. Uh, this used to be a dumping ground for bits, like the other side, but there's a demarcation line and that's his little place, uh, nothing uh, and he stops with me the whole time. So before I get too <laughs> too worked up over that, we shall move on. But I wanted to show you. Uh, obviously, he's in here with me, so that's his little place. Uh, just uh, one last little bit before we go to my other cupboard. Uh, inside the doors, I've got. Uh, my, I love my motorcycle racing. Only the free stuff that's on YouTube, and that I don't. You know, I don't have pay for view or anything. This is. Mr. Valentino Rossi, anybody sees that number will know 46. Um, I mean, you know, I, I don't care. I'm not one of these. It's like footballers that, that, that people like certain teams. I like other riders as well. But Valentino has, has been at the top of his game and he'll be retiring soon. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's, he's that's just something. I love my bike racing and uh, I'd like to build a couple of sports bikes, as I've said. So that's what that uh, ninja's there for at some stage. The other side, I've got a load of people's names, dresses and stuff for sending figures to, so we won't show you that. Right guys, cupboards open, uh, brief look at the bottom, that's all Gavs. You notice I wear a lot of stripy stuff, a lot of green stuff, that's because I, both my pops uh, are working or were working dogs, they both retired when Barclay passed away on the 29th of March last year, and Arch, Arch, Arch isn't too old, he's, he's uh, coming up for nine this year, but uh, he's retired as well. They still train, still train on dummies, but uh, I tend to be wearing a lot of greens and browns, you'll see that a lot on Stripey, it's just field related stuff. Uh, this is a Green Stuff World uh, light box, brilliant, uh, um, very cheap, uh, not too flimsy, get some backings with it, uh, different light settings. Uh, Michael, if you don't, you probably have all this stuff anyway, but you might want to look at that from Green Stuff World. It's great for doing busts and from larger scale. Figures. I don't think it'll it'll actually fit uh, um, a 135 vehicle in. I'm not sure. This will be my next build, the TI67. I'm going to do it as a. I've got to do it as one of the blue ones. I love my Israeli stuff. I've got another Israeli book coming actually on, on Israeli track vehicles. Uh, but I really want to go to town. I couldn't do the other one, T55, at the moment, and I'm going to do this as one of the tyrants at the. Uh, uh, the, the Lebanese militias we're using. I'm going to do it. I have to do it blue. <laughs> so that's coming soon. The only thing is I, it's got rubber tracks and I really hate rubber tracks. They take me back to the 80s and my stringy glue and my enamel paints and whatever. And I'm really tempted to push the boat out and either get some plastic type tracks if I can or the, even them metal ones. But when you only pay 20 quid for a kit to pay 30 quid plus for metal ones, <laughs> this is a bit... You know, when you're in my circumstance, I don't know, I'll decide, but I, I really don't want to put rubber, the rubber band tracks on there. I really would like to to, to make it a bit special. Uh, obviously, my labs, uh, striker, Greg Riley's doing a, um, going to be doing the ambulance version of that. That's the other T55, brand new. Um, if you don't know, I had a, a mini meltdown crisis when we first got this kit. Uh, <laughs> Archie, little bugger ran off, uh, that's my other dog, um, decided never done it before, I'd got the sprues in the box, decided to pick the first one up that came into his, his eye line, which happened to be the turret sprue, <laughs> put a nice gouge, a couple of gouges into the turret, it probably, it's absolutely repairable, well, but of course with me and my head problems, I had a bit of a mini meltdown, my wife, bless her, went onto eBay, she, she knows me account, <laughs> and, uh, and ordered me an exact uh, copy, but I wanted to proceed with the one I'd got, so I've got a completely new T55 there, and that will be, when I've built the other one, I'll wait a year or so, and then have a crack on that, and do it with some different decals, or whatever, decals, what do I call it decals for, we always call them decals, uh, right, um, favourite uh, uh, jet, Starfighter, F104, Italian is reboxing of Hasegawa, um, I'm not good enough to do it yet, and again, another one I've promised myself to do when I'm, I'm better at things. 
this is a tribute to Barclay uh, rather than the few. I know that I don't mean that to be controversial, but it's a Cocker Spaniel and the look on the pilot's face is the look that the little chap gave me all his time with me and he always used to scrabble around my shoulders like that as well. So um, that's going to be an up and coming unboxing, but not till I've done the the Native American bust. Uh, this is just again another dumping ground, this one. Uh, we have boxes, oh sorry not boxes, these are really ancient, these are, I, I make my own tufts now but obviously they're still here in case I need some. Every uh, every static grass known to man, uh, I do 100% recommend the knock, the knock railway stuff, uh, I've got a lot of cheap stuff from from YouTube, from eBay, and it really is crud. It, it, half the colours don't pick up, but that knock stuff is brilliant. So that's that. I've actually I've got to get some more of that, some longer. Uh, Pre-made tufts that I've made already. Uh, there's no point getting all these out there, war games related stuff. If I haven't got stuff on for a client, or if it's getting a bit samey, a bit boring, I'll. Um, knock a unit up and put them up for sale when you know it sometimes take me about four months to do but um, yeah they get done uh, photographic backing now this is more model related I think <laughs> you guys are thinking really we hope so <laughs> so <laughs> right um, that's it falling out on me uh, these are figure related scale 75s scale 75 is extremely matte um, it can give you great results, but if you can't, if you're new to it, you might struggle. Uh, I really do prefer the Andrea now myself, but I do use these as well. We've got enamels. Now this, I can't believe I'm telling this, but hey, if I can tell you I'm a nutter, uh, you might as well, uh, you might as well hear this tale. Gav on eBay bought second hand, somebody's second hand three bottles of enamel type washes. I just no, I did not know they were second. Yes, well, no, he wasn't conning me. He said all over used, but I honestly thought used just meant you know they hadn't been opened and all the rest of it. Oh no, they've been opened. They were used, all right. I mean, no, they weren't down to five mil from the bottom. They were more or less, um, you know, somebody. But somebody had had a good go on them. Ah, oh, tell you what, guys. Uh, yeah, I love this primer. Um, this is now my primer of choice, uh, but it's hard to get at the moment, although I have one new bottle of grey, a bottle of black and a bottle of white. Um, these are all odds and sods, uh, um, different MIG uh, paints there. Um, we've got some AKs, AKs. Uh, we've got some of their metallics. Uh, some more Vallejo plastic putty, some of these little micro brush doobries. I was only saying to Greg Riley the other day, the stuff we buy. <laughs> if somebody, if somebody must wonder what the heck you are when <laughs> it's after stuff we buy for modelling that actually isn't, uh, you know, it's got a different purpose. Uh, I don't. Again, I'm so new to coming back to it. I don't have a lot of the consumables that you guys have. Uh, that's my whole collection of masking tape, although I'm so appalling at masking, it probably doesn't really matter. Uh, some oils under there, junior hacksaw for metal pieces, a bit of, I've had that Tamiya stuff for years. Um, we've got our meat IDF paints, my Tamiya scriber for the first time I'm using it because the Osario, I'm teaching myself how to do weld beads and stuff on. Uh, this will be another unboxing figure related. It shouldn't really be in here, but I didn't know where else to put it for the moment. That's a Tommy's War 1 in 35 scale. I've always, well, 1 in 32. I've always wanted to paint uh, mounted. So uh, I'm, I'm, the Great War is one of my big things, 1914 to 1915, uh, to read up on. So uh, I wanted to do that. Uh, we've got some filters. And there's probably other bits and pieces under here as well, which sorry for the shaky cam. Uh, razor saw there for for doing resin. I would like one for the smaller type Tamiya ones to do for the modelling. Here's more stores and plinths badly cut. Uh, these are figure bases. 
um, my uh, gooseneck thing for filming, some spoons for testing, bits of brass rod. So, um, oh, acquisition the other day, big bucket load of uh, PVA. Right guys, we're in a separate room. Uh, I just wanted to, it's the, the reason I'm showing you in here is it's only a little, little box room. It used to be my old painting room. Um, these are the only figures I've painted so far, display wise, and they're not really shown in the light. It's Lucky Jack, who's my icon on my uh, channel. 54mm uh, 1600 rifleman, a uh, musketman I should say. Celtic Warrior, 54mm. Um, French Grenadier, 54mm. Uh, bust of a, of a um, dwarf. That was terrible. That was that was scale 75. Blooming horrible figure to clean up. Uh, the latest one I've had on the channel. The face is better with lights on. When it's in shadow, it's not really good. But um, that's my Soviet Airman from 43 to 45. Uh, and then the others. That's just um, some stuff my wife put in there because I didn't know where else to put it. Uh, my Merkava. My T. 28 is it? I can't remember now. Winter Dio. Uh, I've got a sea of like little soldiers and that to sell off and scrap. And she wants me to clean that out so I can actually put my my figures. Um, I've got die there. I used to collect die cast aircraft back in the early 2000s when they were on sale. Um, and they some of them still live in there, but they're all going to be cleaned up, put back in the boxes, put in the loft. And these three, these three here will be dedicated to. Um, to uh, display my my large scale models, uh, I wanted to show you this because it uh, it shows you what we have to deal with. As uh, I've collected books ever since I was a kid, and I've actually got the very first military book, which was a uh, oh here we go. Let's just I've got to show you this. Uh, sorry guys, that's the very first book I ever got which is a ladybird book for, you know, more or less teaching kids to read, really. There's a lot of decent history in that. Really good. And they've even got them in the real uniforms, not like the pretend yellow scarves and all that stuff. So, yeah, I've kept that all these years. Um, and my dad, when I was about the same age, so I'd be about seven, he bought me uh, German armoured fighting vehicles of World War Two, which is in here somewhere. Sorry, I nearly fell over. But I've collected military books my whole life. Um, in this, you'll see a few others in here. I've got um, working, <laughs> working spaniel training dogs uh, uh, books. Uh, I used to. I've, I passed a load of fancy art, uh, tree surgery exams called arboricultural exams, and I've still got those in there. They've got to be sold off. Uh, Dad's Army. Uh, I've always been a Dad's Army fan. I've got them most. You know anything that's Dad's Army, I've got it. As we can see, we've got working gun dogs and all that stuff, but um, that's a cracking book uh, on Arnhem. Uh, my own regiment served at Arnhem uh, uh, as a glider regiment, glider infantry. But it just—I wanted to just show the eclectic mix of a of a, a military a military buff. We've got uh, General Pershing chasing Pancho Villa, uh, Anatomy of Glory in Napoleonic books, um, Under Devil's Eye. Uh, British Army in Salonica in the Great War. Um, we've got books on Nelson. We've got a few steam railway books on there, in there which I've bought cheap off eBay occasionally. Um, down here we've got, uh, again, generals like Haking, Sinking of the Lusitania, uh, Michael Wittmann. Uh, we've got uh, Barfield on Caesar. Uh, and inside we've got the larger books which I'm not going to get out but you can see roughly different titles there let's just go into these here you might as well see but just the eclectic mix a lot of it great war stuff recently in the last 20 years but I've got tons of U-boat stuff when I was into U-boats in the 90s uh, again lots of different uh, great war stuff as well we've got Israeli half tracks I've got another Israeli book coming our Soviet T-55, I don't know who it was, but one of my um, commentators on the channel put me onto that one, and that is a cracking book on the T-55. Um, my mate Mick got me that book there from the uh, Tank Museum, Bovington. The 
Ospreys. I'm not a huge fan of Ospreys to be honest with you, but they are really handy go-tos for initial dips into uniforms for different things. So they're nearly all work-related ones. And I've got probably about another 15 or one well, actually probably about another 30 downstairs of my older ones. And then again, more uh, we've got anything from a couple of American Civil War books there. We've got Operations in Sicily, uh, Douglas Haig, William Mike Wars in Ireland. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you that because if if this was a, an ideal world, um, Gav would have this in his uh, in his studio. But unfortunately, we can't have everything. But I did want to show it, and hopefully, maybe uh, next year, I'll be able to show you uh, this with. Uh, a few a few kits built kits in they'll probably be dusty because it doesn't really stop the dust this but uh, right I'll wrap it up I'll go we'll do a we'll do a shot to camera that's uh, that's technical talk that is blooming it guys <laughs> I know I can do a lot of talking but my life I was trying to condense that because you're not going to get this edited oh please don't tell me this is two hours long hang on a second Yorkshire tea beautiful Right guys, um, Michael once again, thanks for putting me forward for this again, I think. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I, whether it's, I, I don't need a lot and I've never asked for a lot in life to be honest with you. I don't want to rule the world, I don't want to, don't want to be rich, famous, you know, hey I'm already good looking, <laughs> what do you want? Uh, but I, yeah you know, it, my my studio, as I call it, is what it is. What it is, you know. You don't need a lot to figure paint. Um, this, even the scale modeling side, you know. Once you've got your your compressor, airbrush, you know. I'm not going to start telling people what they should have and what they shouldn't have. You know, what do I know at the moment? And even if I knew a lot, I still wouldn't be telling you. Uh, it's each to his own. If you're building them on a tea tray, if you're building them in a giant extension on the side of your house. You know, good luck to you. Uh, we do this. We do this scale modelling and the figure painting. We do it for, uh, you know, enjoyment. You know, it takes a break from the world. Uh, even all you guys that don't have head problems or whatever. You know, it's it's just my on my channel. It says uh, you know one of the description things I put. I love the world in miniature, and I do. You know, to 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 see somebody's work on a vehicle. Uh, I was looking at Panzer Brush's work the other day, uh, and he done on a Ferdinand, I don't think it was an elephant, it was a Ferdinand, um, and he'd done some cracking work and on some Marders as well, I like the Marder as well, uh, you know, it's, and, and Greg Riley on his Tiger, um, there's there's some brilliant work going on and uh, I just love seeing that created and on the modelling, and I'll say this on the modelling side because this was more, I think, put out in the modelling community, um, I... I'd like to, I've got my idea, that T55 or the Tyron uh, that I've got there, the Trumpeter one, uh, I'd like to do a dio for that and I've got a few ideas um, and I always say this and it never happens so we'll, you know, we'll suck it and see, we'll wait, we won't see what happens but um, I've got some plans for that which is why I'm looking maybe to improve the tracks on it just to, just to go that extra mile. Um, but what I like about the one in thirty-five scale is I can do the figures as well. Yes, you can do them in twenty mil as well, you know, one in seventy-two, or whatever. But I can have the enjoyment of painting some figures and making a, a kit at the same time and bring them all together. I just don't have, as you can see, I hardly have any space to do to actually show things off. So I've always said to myself, be prepared to throw things in the bin. You're going to have to because, and I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean the ones that I have them. You know, I, I, I make a mess of, but I just don't have room to put things. So eventually, I suppose the Mercury and stuff's going to have to end up in the bin. Uh, it's just, you know, if you want to build build more, you need space to, to put them for a while. So, yeah. So guys, I appreciate you um, taking most of your day probably to watch this video. Uh, it is appreciated. Now, I'm and thank you once again, Michael, for putting me forward. Uh, I'm supposed to put two people up for this. I believe so first one uh, mr. Greg Riley uh, Greg 
uh, you know, no pressure on you whatsoever. Um, I know that if you do decide to do this, you're going to have one of those plastic tubes outside. You know, they're doing construction sites that lead down to a skip and you'll be frantically throwing stuff down those tubes <laughs> to get, clean your room up. Because mine's never been so spotless. Uh, I mean, poor old, uh, poor old Greg, he thought his wife had left him uh, a couple of months ago. Um, but what had happened was she brought a, uh, a brew in, a cup of tea, we call them brews, brought a cup of tea in and, uh, and she couldn't find a way out for three days. Uh, so, so he's going to be frantically cleaning his place up to, uh, if he wants to, 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 to do one of these videos. Uh, my other uh, nomination is military modeler Paul. Uh, Paul's a cracking lad. Uh, he does some brilliant builds and there's stuff to like Greg's to aspire to for people like me. Uh, he's, he's always got a nice sense of humour. He's always upbeat and um, he'll probably be ripping down all his... Uh, Pin up girl posters and stuff. I oh, he's a sly old dog. <laughs> we know. <laughs> joking, Paul. I'm joking. Uh, but no, he's he's um, he's he's a cracking builder. And uh, Paul, again, no pressure. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But uh, uh, let's uh, do this uh, COVID-related uh, workshop, man cave, studio, tea tray tour, whatever you happen to be making your models in. So, guys. Thank you for this uh, <laughs> joining me on this this uh, ramble of sorts, uh, and we will catch each other very very soon on another video. Cheers, guys.